the International Association for Media and Communication Research Annual Conference 2021 Nairobi was organized virtually from July 11th to July 15th uh, this year. Along with the annual conference, the IAMCR had supported no travel events in different countries across the globe. In India, we had three such no travel events. In Kolkata, we had organized the IAMCR India Regional Conclave and the theme was Rethinking Borders and Boundaries, the Digital Journalism Context. This offline event was organized in the historic press club Kolkata on July 14th uh, for over three hours. And I'm extremely thankful to the three eminent speakers who spoke on the occasion. The uh, Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor Adamus University Professor Ujjal Kumar Choudhury, the uh, President Press Club Kolkata, and an eminent journalist uh, Sri Shnyashishur, and the Communication Specialist UNICEF Office for West Bengal Ms. Shucharita Bardhan. I'm especially thankful to all the colleagues, over 25 of them, who were present on the occasion and who took part in the uh, regional conclave and uh, took part in the uh, discussions afterwards. Uh, here is the video recording for uh, all of you. The Press Club of Kolkata, after a COVID-induced hiatus of 16 months, organized its first face-to-face -face event on July 14th in partnership with International Association for Media and Communication Research, IAMCR, along with Kolkata-based Adamus University and Shurendranath College for Women. It was organized due to the untiring efforts of the IAMCR ambassador in India, Dr. Uma Shankar Pandey. The focus was on digital journalism going beyond borders and boundaries, physical, emotional and cultural. The welcome note was from Dr. Pandey as the key host. IAMCR uh, online conference is on right now from 11th of July and today is the fourth day. We, as part of this IAMCR India Regional Conclave, we decided to uh, uh, have the theme very similar to the original theme. And that is why uh, Rethinking Borders and Boundaries, the Digital Journalism Context. And now, uh, Digital Journalism is uh, one thing that has uh, finally taken up in a big way in the last 17-18 uh, months. Probably it might have taken a longer time to catalyze, it might have taken a longer time before we had uh, uh, access to all the technology that we do, but uh, uh, whatever it is, digital journalism is now uh, here to stay. Not just digital journalism, even even online uh, uh, mode of uh, 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 communication and teaching and all these things are here to stay. So we have an academician on the panel, we have a practicing journalist on the panel, and we have somebody from the social media. Dr. Pandey's welcome was followed the video recording of a session from the Digital Divide section of IAMCR Nairobi was played out. Here the recording of the Digital Divide working group video session. Uh, we can go watch here. Dr. Ovas Nirvola, who is here, also with us. And uh, I'm extremely happy to welcome um, the speakers. Uh, the university building and the university rooms to remote and online teaching. So this uh, produced a lot of uh, different reactions and efforts uh, involving teachers, involving staff members, involving students. And of course, uh, the first days, uh, the first few weeks were extremely difficult because, uh, we, or because of an obvious unpreparedness of the Russian journalist education to the situation. However, this was not an exclusion worldwide and uh, the um, idea uh, to study circumstances uh, within journalism education uh, in many different countries 
uh, came from the World Journalism Education Congress, which uh, actually invited us to join uh, uh, in a way uh, to, um, to collect expert interviews uh, and expert reviews. We had a very to open the discussion, the president of the Press Club of Kolkata and a well-known senior broadcast journalist working with the Doordarshan, Mr. Snehashi Shur, analyzed two authentic media industry documents, Digital News Report and Ernst & Young FICCI Frames Report of 2020 to dwell upon the spread and impact of digital journalism in Indian context. I am not a specialist, I am a reporter. So, I will report something. I will basically report on two documents. Both the documents are quite familiar to you. One is DNR, that is the digital news report of Reuters. And another is uh, Ernst & Young, uh, sorry, ENI. ENI Fiki report, Annual Media and Entertainment Industry Report. We all have to depend on it. Yes, there is digital divide. And the built-in of digital is what is the topic of the day is that it, 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 it traverses without border, sans border. So it goes out of the border. There is no physical border in digital. So today what I get and somebody in the Europe or the US also gets the same thing. This is the digital and the availability and access. If you have digital, if you don't have digital divide, if you have connectivity, if you have gadgets, so you have this. So it is the future of media. Proportion of social media used by any purpose of news. That is, uh, you know, what is the purpose of news for which uh, we are, uh, there are two things. You can see the Facebook and uh, the other one is YouTube. So one, more or less, they are almost the same and proportion of, uh, proportion that use each social media network for news in the last week average in 24 markets in various countries. You can see uh, across the year that how uh, the Facebook has increased as a first source of media. Next. Now COVID misinformation. Now misinformation, we used to talk about information more but now especially in the digital because of the going away of uh, gatekeeping role and the responsibilities are not coming into all these digital legislations and all for digital media. But since uh, everybody is a journalist and uh, uh, eyewitness, uh, uh, watcher is also a communicator, the sender. So receiver has become a sender. Everybody can disseminate information. So that's why a lot of fake news. And in these uh, countries, we see that uh, WhatsApp contributes most fake news and uh, on the other side, other countries, we see that uh, it is the mm, uh, Facebook which uh, gives you uh, the most uh, uh, misinformation. Points to ponder public service news through digital platforms. People are getting public service news because of COVID and all they wanted to know. Even every day things got changed. Firstly, the second dose of COVID shield, first it was uh, six weeks or four, five weeks to six weeks, then now it is 84 and we may not know that it may be reduced also. Truth, trust, transparency on one side, they give it uh, for the digital media and the fake news is on the other side. Mobile journalism is growing, everybody knows, you are all professors, mostly or scholars, I did not explain. Media laws of cyber world and internet, this has become a major, major factor. Obviously, media laws or other laws like sedition laws being applied to media, this is uh, an area of major deliberations. This is not an area of today's discussion. Political economy of online media, new media ecosystem and power of new media. This is very important. I mean, if, if anybody discusses it with, in the light of the recent elections, that how social media and new media were, were used for campaigning, this is a major, major deviation and it's increasing election after election. Obviously, our country has a digital divide. 54% usage does not mean that everybody has access. But it is true that there are illiterate people, but they manage to send uh, you know, pictures and take pictures and things like that. They are using smartphones. Moving on, the next speaker, UNICEF communication specialist, Ms. Shuchorita Bordhon, presented a powerful integrated social communication case study 
of how UNICEF communicated on child welfare and related issues during the pandemic, raging for nearly one and a half years using print, television, radio, online, social media, webinars at all, and made a strong impact. What happened in media, because I also happened to work with media uh, very closely, uh, a lot of the media was not sure whether they should go to ground zero and start reporting, or is it going to start affecting them and therefore they should stay away. And I'm telling you this because on those days too, I was out with the media and in between trying to gather information about what is happening and also trying to draw a sense of what is it that we need to report in terms of trying to see that where is testing happening, are the, is the information on deaths and testing rates uh, transparent enough, uh, uh, how should it be shared and a whole lot of information that was suddenly coming onto the public domain as well as uh, media was getting briefed on them. And you also had agencies trying to tell you about the situation of the virus, which apparently at that point of time was only evolving. And therefore you had different sets of information leading and adding to more uh, um, confusion, chaos, and therefore trying to assess what, what we were uh, you know, at, at the brink of the next slide, please. So this is also uh, some of the, as part of being in the development sector, we uh, support, provide technical support to the government, to civil society organizations, to uh, academic institutes, research organizations, trying to see what is the information that needs to go out in the public domain for people. And therefore, there's a whole series of creatives that we started developing. I'm not sure for any other campaign, we've accumulated as much of information, including creatives, and spent as many resources as we have done for COVID. Yes, uh, uh, the, as it was evolving, the information also started evolving until we looked at what is known as COVID appropriate behavior. We were able to pinpoint what are the specifics that need to be told, because in our kind of communication, this is what we tell the media also to kindly share. And this is the kind of awareness that we also provide at, at the community level, including us, because this is a kind of a behavior that we need to practice. So you could pinpoint it to COVID or okay. We had an excellent series of deliberations. I think this has been one of the most appreciated during the COVID time. And my experience of working with the entire team has been no less than exhilarating, if I can say. We had all kinds of media educators. We had the senior most reporters, including those covering those important beats. We had pro-vice chancellors, vice chancellors. We also had guests from across the border, which is why I wanted to mention this, that uh, in, in the times of uh, digital access, whatever much that we had, we had already gone local in many ways because of the way people participated. Earlier, when we used to have these occasions mostly, we could fit a size of maximum 50, 60, 100. And if it was a larger conference, maybe 200. But here, at each of the sessions, we had no less than 150. And the people who connected were across the country. And many times, they were outside the country. And in a very short period of time, people started telling us, where is the next one happening? So what you see is, uh, this is something that we did a record breaking sort of things in terms of what we are discussing today. This was one of the best examples in my experience that I carry, where the resources were the minimal that we used. The people who spent time on arranging were minimal. Of course, we gave in our best. But if you had to have so many events, and if you had to have that many kind of uh, people, it would, it would have been very difficult. The last speaker of the conclave was the Pro Vice Chancellor of Adamus University, Professor Ujwal Kumar Chaudhuri, who was earlier the Media Dean of Institutes like Symbiosis and Amity Universities, Pearl Academy and Whistling Woods International. He focused on the rise of mobile journalism and how digital media is democratizing news, sourcing stories from the hinterland, allowing subaltern grassroots 
voices to be heard as well. The rediscovery of journalism in digital times leading to the glaring digital divide in the society were all explained by Professor Chaudhary. There is a huge rise of mobile journalism today and that's one critical point that the academic field, the academic me media, people in academics are somewhat missing out. 752 universities in India out of the 1043 universities have media departments. Not even 25% of them have a separate module, course, chapter, not chapter I won't say, module or course on mobile journalism. It's considered to be just journalism of another variety. Once upon a time it was told, print, TV, radio, internet, just another medium. Today internet is the mother medium. All the other have combined within internet. Similarly, just now it is told, you know, mobile journalism is just another way of doing journalism. You will see, three years from now, mobile journalism is the mother way of doing journalism. The topic of today is rethinking borders and boundaries. Now you might say border and boundary is the same meaning. Why are we repeating? It's like Saparivar Sahit. So why are we repeating? The borders and boundaries are not only physical here. There are virtual, there are psychological, there are emotional, there are media space borders, there are multimedia borders and boundaries which are physical boundaries as well, linguistic boundaries as well, cultural boundaries as well. And today, how digital medium is actually breaking these boundaries that were there for so long. There are new digital revenue models possible. The new digital revenue models will actually bring these options in front of us. So even when we talk to our learners as mentors, we must mention this very clearly. The Times of India Identity is not the source of jobs only. 101reporters.com is there, for example. There are reporters from in from hinterland of the country and they are aggregating the stories and then they are working as an agency to connect to thousands of news platforms in the world. Roti, Kapla, Makan, Siksha, Swast. For any human being a dignified life, these five are the components. Today the sixth component, digital connectivity. And if that doesn't connect the country, you will find another form. If Roti, Kapla, Makan nahi ho, to log naksal bante hai. We need to connect the society as much as possible. There may be fake news, so-called fake news, there may be anything, but still we need to connect. What can be done? One, government has saved 6% of the GDP for education in the new education policy and actually spent 2.9%. So make it 6%. And an additional 3% is spent for digital connectivity. Two, the government has made compulsory 2% of profits for CSR, corporate social responsibility by every private company. Give it for digital connectivity. Three, those who are directly connected to internet or telecom or, uh, or devices, production of devices, have CSR of giving free or low cost items everywhere. I had one older mobile which I wasn't using because this Samsung is smarter, faster. So that I, I contributed to an NGO. Please contribute. We contribute our old clothes, which are not torn and tattered. At the end, they become tight and you know, we give it. We contribute our old books. Why not contribute the old laptops, the old mobiles, and or, and pull funds to buy low-cost smartphones and contribute. Why not give our institutional infrastructure for a few hours every week to the less privileged children around the universities and colleges? Will the private universities and colleges do it? They need to do it. That's their institutional social responsibility. We are careful about government social responsibility. We are careful about corporate social responsibility. How far are we careful about institutional or individual social responsibility? That's a question I would like to put before you. At the end, Professor Chaudhuri also narrow-casted a short film on the five W's and one H of mobile journalism which drove home the point of rising significance of Mojo emphatically. Mobile journalism is becoming the harbinger of web-led or digital-led convergence in journalism in times to come. And this mobile journalism is being fronted by the coming in of the smartphone. The smartphone is perhaps the biggest breakthrough in this century 
in the 21st century. Because today, it is not only personalized, it is net driven, it is becoming cheaper, it is becoming wider in usage. Just in India, 830 million of smartphones are there in use. Even considering that many would be having two or three even, there would be at least 600 million people in this country, uh, India, India, who would be having smartphones. iPhone is a major development, but even others, other smartphones, Samsung and many others are becoming cheaper. And the capacity of battery, internet power, internet capacity, uh, internet becoming cheaper, apps, memory, higher memory, these are empowering the smartphone and actually creating the world of mobile journalism. So what in one line would be mobile journalism? Identifying, recording, editing and producing news on the smartphone. In the simplest manner, that's mobile journalism. So today we are moving not just the raw citizen journalist or user generated content on the smartphone. That's the beginning of it. But that's not journalism in the real sense. And it is to evolve to structured user generated stories. It's only when UGS comes, it becomes truly mobile journalism. A new workflow is coming for media telling, storytelling, where reporters are trained and equipped for being fully mobile and largely autonomous. This is the crux of the point. Encourages cross-platform creativity and digital innovation. Because innovations can be brought forth only when you put in a structured story with what you get on the streets, what you get all around and what you can do through your research together. So there has to be a breaking of the silos. Silos between social media desk and video production desk. And you are moving, we are moving to an era where photography, radio, TV and web, all these content are coming closer. And it's the web content that is going across seamlessly to the other platforms. There are various organizations which are, which are practicing mobile journalism in a very effective manner. We can talk about CBC in Canada, NDTV in India, Lemon Blue in France, Irish broadcaster RTE, even there RTE is even bringing full documentaries shot through the mobile technology, so handheld mobile technology. India is waking up to mobile journalism as a field, as for practice in journalism and as also a part of education. It's only in the last couple of years that institutions are rising to the occasion of including a full course, sometimes a basic and an advanced course on mobile journalism. Dr. Uma Shankar Pandey moderated a lively interaction session with the members of the audience who are from the academic field. Thank you for the I was really intrigued by the idea presented by UKC uh, Sam, which talks about uh, you know, how, how digital caters to a niche, whereas the common media is for masses. And along with that, the idea of flow is well founded. This is not an uh, observation how you know, content is now free flowing across devices. It does not limit itself to one of the devices. And uh, apart from that, uh, obviously, there, there are issues with the digital. Um, you know, the digital world we are living in, which obviously has been pointed by all the uh, theory, that's basically the digital divide, um, along with the health issues, which, uh, you know, is also, I think, going to be one of the major uh, concerns. But uh, we are all, I guess, looking forward to learning and teaching in a blended mode where, um, you know, one will kind of Thank you. Thank you so much. So do you think that uh, people's choices, people's views are still uh, more segregated in terms of what to expect from what medium and uh, can this change? When you were speaking about all the kind of digitization or the, how digital media can be a way ahead of, uh, of, ta of targeting or tackling all these kinds of uh, you know, mix or false information and misinformation, you also had a kind of you know, resource you have a resource backup. But when we talk about the community channels, they have lack of resources. They are also being you know, obstructed by government restrictions or you know, uh, uh, disseminating news, which they are actually not allowed to. So how do they tackle this kind of information? They are actually relaying the, you know, all-in-year radios or the kind of government uh, public uh, broadcast. 
Okay. So that is what I want to do. Here, we were trying to prioritize what the scientific and correct information was and trying to promote that in various platforms. I just want to just end with one word. I realized I did not mention it. All the FM content that was generated was done from the homes of the artists and producers, was done from us giving our recordings over mobile, uh, and even the videos that you saw there of all of them were done on mobile phones. So just wanted to mention that to you because I thought that I slipped from that. But Madam, we can talk more about that, but in this presentation, I was only talking about utilizing those two community radio stations for reaching out to an added cohort uh, of people who are otherwise even not used. Uh, thank you very much to each one of you individually, personally for making it here. I know these uh, COVID times are very difficult, but you all participated in a historic meet, historic in many ways. Uh, this is the first time uh, here in a regional conclave of this sort. This is the first. Uh, physical meet after such a long time. This is the uh, uh, first time we are uh, talking about the digital context in, in, in this particular manner. So to, just to register our, our sincere thanks, uh, we also have a physical certificate.